What's up guys, it's the Diabolical Gamer coming to you with a brand new video. Today we are going to be playing Doorways, old prototype. And I was scrolling down the Steam list and well, I looked down the tags of horror games. And then I clicked on Psychological Horror. And this is what I found. A free horror game. There's more to the series, but this one was, or it is, or it came out before all the other ones. But we're going to jump right into this. Don't have much background to it. Didn't look too much about it. Found it today. Decided to play. All I know is I can't turn down the game volume too low or at all. So hopefully my voice will be picked up higher than the game volume. But welcome to Doorways Old Prototype. This game you're about to play was created before the development of Doorways Prelude. The first episode in the Doorways series. This version was built between late 2011 and early 2012. So about five years ago. It was an early prototype made to show the main features of the game. The notes here have been updated recently, 2016, to share some of the details during the journey. I believe it came out, I think on Steam it said October 6th of 2016. So only a couple months ago. So let's get into this. We're loading. The game is supposed to be very short, so hopefully, maybe, I can do it in one sitting. Or if not, I'll do it in probably two. I doubt it'll be longer, because it's a free game, and free games usually are cheaper. So right off the bat, we see we are kind of in like a hell kind of setting. I, I, yeah, let's just, let's just describe it as that. We're in hell right now because we have to read all these notes. The first level was called The Abyss, and it was created by Tobias Rusian, programmer, and Ignacio Belage, artist in 2011 for the company NGD Studios. They had the opportunity to make a quick prototype from scratch in two weeks. The setting looked like some kind of hell, and this was actually something you see in the last episode from the official game Doorways, Holy Mountains of Flesh at El Chaco, four years later. So we're definitely going to have to try out the other games, especially if this one's any good. So right off the bat, uh, okay, so I guess it has a lot of parkour to it. Kind of looks like the nether from Minecraft, not gonna lie. The controls seem to be very, very good. So it does look like they updated it quite a bit. Just a lot of parkour, and usually I'm very, very bad at parkour. But we're going to see if we can make it this whole game without dying, even if you might not be able to die, to be honest. But we're going to play this. It's supposed to be, so like I said, it's supposed to be a psychological horror game. And one of my biggest fears is hell. Not really, but we can say it is. So maybe, maybe it'll be a little scary. If not, we're already having fun just parkour jumping everything. We got the webcam up today. We got the new beautiful webcam. I absolutely love it. Works a lot better. Shoot up. Shoots up twice. Jump over. Go down the stairs. Fuck, I went backwards. Okay, there we go. Let's get us let's get us back on track. That one doesn't shoot anything. Let us shoot. That one only shot. 
all the way across and grab a drink of this tea. It really just looks like one big nether fortress in my eyes. Can I stop? Just read this note real quick. At the beginning of the game was about action and platforming without giving much importance to the story but focus on the atmosphere and gameplay. The goal for the project was to make something fun and interesting, but at the same time, cheap to make. That's why the original idea was to don't to don't have any characters in the game. Since that is a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive because you have to have voice actors or even if you don't, that's more that's more shit you have to create in the game. Especially if you have more than one. Watch your steps. Okay. This game reminds me of something. Not, it doesn't really remind me of something, but it does have a lot of aspects of of different of different games. Can I go anywhere else? No. Okay, we made it. Very easy. There's some tables, maybe. I'm just scared something's gonna start fucking jump right out at me. Fucking time. 
one. I did see this down here though. Just drop down. Drop down. I think there is no fall damage, it's just in case let's just not jump all the way down. Let's just run the fuck out of here. Loading, loading, loading. The auditorium. I don't know if I'm going to split this into parts or not, guys. So, we'll have to see what's up. If I do, I do. If I don't, then you guys, it won't matter. It won't matter either way. The second part of the game was created by Tobias after leaving the studio to become an indie developer. That's why all the art visuals here were placeholder. But at the same time, the original idea expanded to include creatures at the time. This edition was influenced by Amnesia the Dark Descent. I do have that game, guys. If you do want me to play that, please do leave a like and subscribe. And comment down below if you want me to play that. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this guy? Can I run fast? Run! I don't want those things to touch me. They look like snakes. Alright, that was easy. Turn the lights on. Don't get me too scared. As you can see, the scenarios and situations in the original game were a lot more twisted and surreal than the ones from the final titles. That's why one of the first names for the early prototypes was Twisted. I dig the name. Twisted Metal. Uh. I step on this? Yeah. Fucking figures. These guys are so much fucking faster than me. I know what I'm gonna do. Parkour. Parkour. No! No! Make it. Alright. We're Gucci. We made it. The original story was about a man who was trying to redeem himself. He was a lost soul running to escape from this dark places. That's the reason for the game. It also got get it, to also get temporary names like the Path, Atonement, Heart Dose, Spanish word for Exhausted. I'm feeling pretty good, so I'm not too exhausted. Loving this game so far. Right now, I do feel like maybe the graphics should. I know it's not a real finished game. Parkour? Parkour? Hardcore parkour? Let's jump down here. You guys are thinking I'm doing this too fast because I already recorded it once. And the, like, the audio is really bad. And if you see me ducking my head below the webcam, it's because I'm talking into the mic more. Originally, the game was supposed to include eight short chapters and all, but each one with a gameplay duration like the ones here. So they're pretty long. I say maybe 10 minutes each so that would be an hour and a half say but because of the budget and schedules it was changed to four chapters so really really shortened it but each chapter in the final version ended up being bigger than the previous one and that's why the full game was divided into three parts i really want to play the other games so if you guys want to see me play them also please do comment down below whichever one you guys would like to see first Like I said, if you, it looks like I already know what I'm doing. It's because I already do. But if something scares me, I'll still get scared. Uh, this game's amazing. It's free. I'd look it up. I might put it down in the link below. Just like, I think you can do that with Steam games. If not, go look it up. Play them all. I've never even heard the games before I played this one, but they, well, this one's amazing, so I imagine all of them. I really like the parkour aspect of it, because it's real unique. I know, like, the only, only big games I see that have it was, like, Dying Light, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, this kind of parkour. It was more like climbing on buildings and all that shit. And the other one was, uh, Minecraft, in which I'm not sure. I don't, I mean, I'm sure... YouTubers still play it, but I don't think as much as they were before. I know they're still like Minecraft YouTubers and all that. I'm not sure how how popular it is anymore. I 
I would still play Minecraft if I had something to do. I tried recording that one Pixelmon episode, which it didn't go bad, but I just don't take interest in anything like that. I'll play original Pokemon, but not shit like that. Make it! Okay. Make it. Make it. Make it. Make it. Alright. That one almost didn't make it. I wish you could, like, crouch, like, Minecraft, how you can crouch on the edge of the blocks. Not die. That usually means a guy's about to die. Oh, shit. We're taking a lucid dream right here. Lucid trip. Make it! Oh, motherfucker. No! Oh shit, I ain't making it. I ain't making it. I ain't making it. I ain't making it. Fuck! This guy's so fucking fast. Make it follows you. I wish I would change it to make it follow you. Ridiculous. I wonder if I move this down. I don't want to mess with it too much. And I think I'm talking pretty loud enough. Really hoping this comes out really well. Now it really, 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 really sounds like hell. And what are these guys? Ah! Fuck you. See, he's a lot easier than that last motherfucker. Usually I don't like games where you can't fight back, but so far, so far I'm fine with it. We'll read from this to that. With the pro this prototype you have just played, Tobias was able to convince his uncle Ivan Russian to invest in the project. It was in 2011 when they started a small familiar partnership with when they which they called Sailbot Sailbot Studios. Since we're talking about a middle class family in the third world, Argentina, the investment was very small, but the amount of work and commitment was huge. So I hope they made some money off that, completed their dreams. In March of 2012, the first game, Prelude Chapters 1 and 2, started its official development with a team of two people. The office at that time was Tobias' room at his mother's house. A year later, in 2013, the first title got into the stores, becoming the first Argentinian game to release from Steam Greenlight. In 2014, the development team expanded to five people to get the second game done during the same year, The Underworld, Chapter 3. Like I said, if you want me to play them, just tell me. In 2015, the team continued growing to eight people to create the third, final, and biggest game in the series named Holy Mountains of Flesh, Chapter 4. This game launched as early access the same year and got fully released in 2016, five years after this old prototype, in which I'm just now playing. That scared the shit out of me. Don't walk into the light. It's like we're going from hell to heaven. I'll probably just do this as one video, so no big deal. Is there more? Nope. Okay, guys, that was Doorway's old prototype. If you guys want me to play the other ones, if you want me to play Amnesia, any of those games, I will try my hardest. But please do leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, guys, this has been The Diabolical Gamer. Thank you so much for watching.